playground rumours. We've all heard them. Hell, most of us have helped spread them around at some point in the past. That cheat, that secret level, that hidden character. These myths help to fuel the mystery surrounding the most popular games of our childhood. Nowadays, with the internet and websites like GameFAQs, there isn't the same sense of discovery when it comes to gaming secrets. Regardless, we need to recognise the importance of these myths to the development of gaming culture as we know it. Consider what Mortal Kombat would have been like without Reptile. One of the most popular games for these sort of rumours was GoldenEye for the 64. GoldenEye's design was interesting because it encouraged users to unlock cheat modes in order to extend the game's replayability. By completing a level on a certain difficulty within a certain time, a player could unlock a cheat. As a result, everyone knew about the standards, invisibility, invincibility, all guns. There were rumours, however, of other codes that could not be accessed the normal way, such as line mode. The space in the cheats menu helped fuel these rumours, and it was a complete nightmare for players with OCD. There was one code that was almost universally known, yet no one seemed to have been able to find a way to enable it. That was the infamous All Bonds code. All Bonds was supposed to unlock models of the other Bond actors for use in the multiplayer. Connery, Moore and Dalton. Lazenby, sadly, was once again left on the bench. It's all right. It's quite all right, really. The character models would not only have the faces of the different actors, but also different suits with Sean Connery looking particularly distinguished in white. There were several sources and pieces of evidence that seemed to corroborate the rumour. As we've said, there was clearly space for one more cheat on the menu, and all bonds seemed to fit nicely in both name and type. Many of the marketing materials and official documentation used prototype assets that featured the alternate characters. Even the instruction manual that came with the game had screenshots of the all bonds cheat in action. So of course it had to be in the game. But it wasn't. Players desperately tried a multitude of different ways to unlock all bonds, with the methods changing and morphing as they were passed around. These range from simple button presses in the menu to elaborate playthroughs of specific levels. Perhaps the cruelest development came from the magazine EGM, who proclaimed they'd finally found an answer to the riddle. The player had to have already finished the game, so they had the 007 mode available. This mode allowed players to tweak aspects of the game, such as the enemy health and accuracy. They then had to complete the Aztec level on 007 difficulty. The enemies had to be customised to be at their highest difficulty, and the player needed to finish the level within 9 minutes. To put this in perspective, Aztec was by far the most difficult level in the game, and was difficult to finish even on the average secret agent difficulty setting. The time challenge was also next to impossible, with the nigh omnipotent enemies the icing on the rock hard cake. Against all odds, a small handful of devoted players managed to satisfy these requirements, but were devastated to find that all bonds were still not unlocked. It turned out that this method was just an elaborate April Fool's joke by AGM, using doctored screenshots to trick readers into attempting the soul-crushing challenge. I suspect a lot of people still haven't forgiven them. It turns out that All Bonds was certainly supposed to be in the final game, but as with all Rare games, it was simply part of a significant amount of content that had to be cut from the final game, as confirmed by a Rare interviewee. Yes, it was the hope of the team that all Bonds would be available to play, but for various reasons, they weren't. Players on the Nintendo 64 would at least get a chance to play in the different suits initially designed for the other Bond actors, but not until Perfect Dark. The remnants of the code are still in the GoldenEye cartridge though, and they were finally unearthed in 2005 following the release of the GoldenEye ROM editor by the Rare Witch Project website. The decoded images and textures clearly show that the portraits, faces and suit models for the other Bond actors were still in the cartridge, but simply blocked from being accessible through normal means. Players have since used the editor to hack the GoldenEye ROM and enable the code, giving a sense of closure to what had been a long and frustrating hunt. Rare games are always fascinating to dissect 
mostly because of their long development times and all the little beta bits left in the final releases of their games. Now, they haven't given a proper reason as to why All Bonds was cut from the final version of GoldenEye, but if I had to guess, it would be similar to what most people on the internet think, and that's that they didn't quite get all the licensing issues worked out in time for the game's release. Now that the mystery of All Bonds is somewhat solved, Everyone can move on to the next Rareware mystery. Time to unearth that dinosaur planet prototype.